Fortnite squad. Yo guys, what is going on? It's your boy Farfetch here, back with a brand new YouTube video. In today's video, we're gonna be coming at you guys, showing you guys. I'm gonna keep this video, first of all, I'm gonna keep this video short and simple. That's the goal to today's video. Keep it very short and simple and just get like, get this all like, out of the way. My videos tend to be quite dragged on and long. I do notice that, but it isn't like, I don't script my videos, which I probably should do. I don't really think. Like, I already know what I'm doing and covering. So I sort of make up as I go along on the spot. I should probably think further about what I'm going to say in the videos. Can't lie, this video is sort of more thought on the spot, but I know exactly what what this video is it's quite a simple one i've already recorded a part to this video and um it's quite a simple quick video showing you guys a little a little um bug and how to fix it and yes guys you've read the title it's the ads bug that's what it is and if you guys don't know what ads stands for it stands for aim down sight so if you guys know fortnite when you aim or aim down sights or ads you actually have um there's actually a bug now you guys probably don't actually notice it it's um somewhat noticeable if you guys don't play fortnite a lot you won't notice it if you guys are not probably a competitive player or don't play under like arena or I I know arena isn't too competitive but i'm not playing under like a competitive stance anytime or um i'm not putting that much dedication into the game or playing hours every day you probably won't understand this if you're a casual player but this is actually quite a big issue and at least for me for a bunch of comp players or for any players that are even just trying to progress or play as much as they can in like in a day and just be become the best player they can be and get better this is an issue this is a real big issue and it can affect your aiming it can affect what you see on your screen because this is an fov bug and um yeah, that's what i'm about to get into so, yeah this this is a bug it's the ads fov bug to so aimed in down sights you now have less fov when you aim down sights it was in the recent update when fauna added the, like the aim assist improvements or whatever you guys want to call it an improvement a, um maybe maybe not an improvement maybe maybe an issue now for controller but i i feel like um just just to get clarification on that i do feel like controllers are better now the aim for controllers is better you just have to get used to it and change around your legacy settings and this legacy settings are actually involved in this video they do tie into this and this is what i'll get into you guys do know the recent update that came out with controllers about the legacy settings all of that all of that all of that um shiz I, I should say um i actually did just say a swear word but i realized my videos actually may get um you know so all of that shiz um all the update with the legacy settings and the new um aim assist for uh, like no l2 spam aim assist stuff for controller there was like new settings added basically for controller but you can also view them on pc so this is also for controller pc any platform you're playing on this will take effect maybe not mobile i'm not 100 sure but yeah after them settings were released a new update with them settings there was an issue where ads fov is now decreased like you now has le less fov when you aim in it's kind of crazy less field of view you can't see as much on your screen your character is larger and your guns larger and you just can't see as much on your screen like half literally half your screen is fully blocked like the whole view now so people to the left you can't see like literally you can't see people to the left when you aim in it's, it's crazy because because that can affect you quite a bit if people are pushing you and you are aiming down sights you won't be able to see them coming up so that's what i'm showing you guys in this video right now that's like exactly what i'm showing you in this video i'm just gonna get straight into it i already recorded the clip of me showing you guys what it does look like when you now aim in and how to fix it and get the old fov back therefore you could see more when you aim down sight and potentially have a competitive advantage over your opponent so yeah we're just gonna get straight into it and I've, yeah i've already filmed the clip and yeah guys just um enjoy it take it on board okay guys so we're over here on fortnite right now as you can see i will now show you guys what i mean by the actual ad ads when you aim down sights and how it's the fov is like oh, look at like you guys can see the fov is quite zoomed in it's actually not normal to have the fov like this so when you aim in your screen obviously zooms in but it shouldn't zoom in that much like that's what i'm trying to get at this just shouldn't shouldn't happen you shouldn't be shouldn't be zooming like this so i'll be showing you guys right now how i can literally just with one click of a button change this and push out the fov so you guys can see more of your screen when you're actually like shooting people so yeah we'll, we'll get we'll do that we'll do that right now guys okay guys so how you change it is so l let me just show you guys now like this is what it looks like with um obviously the ads like or fov zoomed in and how you change it you go here escape go to settings click on like this click this part right here it's actually a new feature click this scroll down to where it says uh, like sensitivity go to use advanced options you want to just toggle this off just toggle this on sorry because basically it'll be off like that this is what it'll look like for you guys toggle it on press confirm scroll down down here to where it says advanced sensitivity and where it says use legacy lock controls turn it on press apply and as you guys see when i aim in it is obviously um not as zoomed in and th there's actually some nice fov on, on on the zoom now so i'll actually change it back right now and just quickly compare the two okay yeah, so like in settings scroll it on um apply and look you guys can see it's very zoomed in go back we'll go back here scroll down to where it is here 
on. Um, actually, I messed that one up. So then legacy lock controls on, and there we go. It's a lot zoomed out, and it's just nicer to aim with any gun. This is the same with any gun. This is with any gun, and it will get rid of that like horrible FOV. I know it's not a big issue, but it's something that I like just to get over with. And and yeah, that's how you stop it. You guys may notice that the FOV was kind of like scuffed recently. So yeah, guys, that's exactly how you do it. So guys, yeah, that is literally all of it. Like that's all I really wanted to show you guys the ADS thing and how to fix it. It's literally two clicks of a button. Very simple to do. Like literally takes less than less than 30 seconds. It takes to fix. It's it's very easy to do, and it will help you out quite a bit. So if you guys did learn from this, then just watch till the end of the video, or just just took this on board. It'd mean the world to me if you guys could drop a like on the video. If you guys don't understand how easy it is to drop a like. Well, you do understand how easy it is to drop a like. It takes two seconds. You guys can literally do it right now as I speak. You guys watch at the end. It, like it's the least you guys could do. I provide you with this, this um amazing content, and you know, <laughs> and um help you guys with stuff. So drop a like. The least you guys could do. It takes two seconds, and um supports me more than you actually think. Drop on likes. Pushes the videos out to further people and how's my channel grow which i'm really dedicated to youtube right now it may not look, not look like it i've uploaded in three days trust me <laughs> daily uploads now because i've scheduled so many uploads and i've literally recorded about eight videos so definitely eight daily uploads on the way but yeah guys drop on like really helps if you guys did watch to the end anyway make sure you are subscribed post notifications on so you can get a post notification shout out at the start of the video and never miss an upload on my channel subscribing really means the world I mean, that's like 87.5 percent of people on my channel I actually watch like majority of my videos like 60 percent of my videos and are not subscribed like that's kind of crazy so you should probably hit the subscribe button and turn it from red to gray because like it helps more than you think like just dropping one sub like it, it means the world to me like generally i'm on the grind to 30k but yeah guys that's the end of the video not much more i want to say drop a comment down below let me know what you guys think about this or just drop a comment you know you can get the post notification shout out with the hashtag noti gang make sure you only comment that if you are like a real supporter and are a part of the noti gang and yeah, means the world, guys. All the support. I love you guys. And yeah, guys. I said guys about 400 times. But yeah, peace. Or yeah, guys. It's been your boy Farfetch, guys. And yeah, peace. Face it, most of us are pretty average at the game. It's not like we can push every player we see in Arena Lobby and get away with it. Only the pros can do that. Instead, we need to pick and choose our fights when we have an advantage. By focusing on taking engagements where you have an edge, you can quickly up the rate in which you win your fights and your matches. We'll be going over everything you need to know about selecting engagements, when to take fights. The outcomes of most fights are usually decided on a few circumstances that exist before the fight even starts. Knowing these conditions can help you decide whether an engagement is worth taking or not. Depending on the stage of the match, situations can change, and so does the risk involved with taking fights. So we'll start off by first discussing early game scenarios and then work our way through to the end game. And before we hop right into that, you guys know the drill, visit ProGuides.com for the best of the best coaches. We also added all new trending articles and VOD analysis videos, so don't hesitate, check that out. Hammer that like button and let's dive right in. Okay, let's start off with the early game. The start of the match can often be the hardest part, plagued by heavy loot RNG and third parties, so you've got to be smart with how you approach fights. By assessing a few factors, you can then decide whether or not you should take a fight. The first factor is your resources. From the moment you land, this can come into play. For instance, if you manage a great landing and can get a rifle before your opponents finish their drop, why not lay in a few rounds? You might pick up a kill. But beyond that point, as you open chests and loot up, you need to be paying attention to the loot differential. This is the difference between your loot and your opponents. Obviously, you can't see exactly what everyone else has looted, but if you play the game enough, you can have a good idea just based on how quickly you're finishing your loadout. If you get a blue pump, some shields, and attack SMG in your first house, you can bet that your opponent next door hasn't found the same. And we all know how good those items are in a fight, but if you only get a gray AK and no shields, you should keep trying to loot, as I'm sure we all know, fighting wouldn't work out too well. The second thing you need to pay attention to is the safe zone location. This doesn't come into play right away, but once it's revealed, you should always check to see how far you need to run. This is especially important if you land on the edges of the map, since you'll probably need to run a longer distance. If the safe zone is really far away, sometimes you'll just be better off if you don't take any fights. You need to think about the long term for the match. Even if you do get a kill, dying to the storm because you rotated too late is a bad outcome. It's still definitely possible to play aggressively with a bad zone, but the time you have to engage shrinks rapidly as the storm approaches. Third, you need to always consider your positioning. Being able to strike from an unknown or advantageous position can instantly give you the upper hand in a fight. The best way to do this is by hiding behind natural cover. Rooftops are especially great for this since they give you the high ground advantage and a great view of the area. However, you need a really good awareness of your opponent's position. Otherwise, you'll just be wasting a bunch of time waiting for them to walk into your view that you could have spent looting and gathering materials. 
Lastly, the number of players in your landing spot makes a massive difference in how you approach fights. Third partying is huge at the start of the game. Players will immediately jump at any opportunity to get easy kills, and so being the first one to initiate a fight can often end in tragedy. By waiting patiently for your opponents to start battling and making yourself the third party, you can be the one that swoops in and gets the easy cleanup. As always though, if you know there are more players in your area, be cautious after a kill, as they'll likely be on their way to fight you. Just take a look at this clip from Benji Fishy. He notices a fight, so he builds up onto the roof and waits for his opening. The first player doesn't even notice him, which allows Benji to get in a nice chunk of damage. The second player interjects and tries to stop Benji from stealing his kill, but with a quick edit, Benji secures it. He spends some more time fighting this second player and would have probably gotten the limb, but instead the zombies end up stealing the kill from Benji. Then as he tries to run away from the horde chasing him, another third party. Benji does his best to tunnel away and lose his opponent, but this guy just doesn't let off. Eventually Benji's run out of mats, so he goes for a play, but ends up falling to none other than his trio's partner, Mitro. Wow, third partying sure played a part in a lot of those eliminations there. So to summarize, your resources, the safe zone location, positioning, and third party potential are what you need to consider during the early game. If you can take the time to assess all four of these factors instead of rushing into each engagement, you will start to have an easier time winning your drop spot. Now onto the mid game. A lot of the same rules from the early game apply here, but there are also a few extra precautions that you need to take. Taking fights during the mid game is generally one of the riskiest things that you can do. Players usually make it to this point with shields, a full loadout, and max materials, so most fights you get into here have the potential of going to their limit, at which point it can be hard to recover from losing a bunch of materials or taking too much damage during the fight. Because even if you win the battle, you still have to think about how you're going to have a successful endgame. As the map shrinks and resources run dry, you don't want to run low going into the late game. It'll put you in a sticky situation and you'll lose out on any positioning advantage you could have otherwise gained. It's also third party central. Players are thirsty to get in on any action they see, so you've got to worry about that as well if you initiate a fight. But the main thing you need to think about is making it to the end game. That's where a majority of the points are earned through placements, and in any decent lobby, you haven't reached placement points just yet. One time taking fights during the mid game can be worth it is if you have no mobility. In most cases, it's not too hard to find a launch pad or some shockwaves in your starting zone, but sometimes the RNG can be cruel. And if you want to have a strong endgame where you don't run out of mats and die, having mobility items is a must. So by forcing and winning a fight, you just might be able to pick up a launch pad or some shockwaves. You can also choose to third party situations if you feel like it. You should always keep an eye on the zone though. If it's still really far, you've got to be careful committing. But by taking third party fights, there's a good chance you can walk away with the loot of a couple players. One tip for engaging in third parties is to see if you can take your time to get in closer before revealing that you've joined in. That way you'll be in a more effective range and have a better chance of securing the kill. Should you get engaged on at some point, like when you're trying to rotate, you have a couple of options. If the situation isn't looking so hot, you could always pop some mobility to try getting away. Or if you didn't get tagged up too much, you could turn around and take the fight. If you have no mobility, the second option is really all you have since it's pretty hard to lose somebody just by running away. If you're too low to take a ranged fight, try boxing up and waiting for them to come to you. Then you can go for a quick edit or two and land some massive pump shots that'll even the odds. The mid game is generally more passive than others. Other than if you need mobility or you spot a good third party opportunity, fights generally aren't worth taking here. Lastly, we've reached the late game. At this phase of the game, positioning and staying alive matter the most. These small zones are packed with players. Making the wrong move or getting too cocky with your aggression is a sure way to end your game prematurely. Then you'll miss out on all those sweet, sweet placement points. When it comes to finding kills in the end game, you generally want to position first, and then the kills will come to you. The only time you really need to go out of your way and ignore positioning is when you're low on resources. If you happen to get into a scuffle during the mid game, you might need to top up on materials before the zones start shrinking. Picking a target and box fighting them is the fastest way to try and recover during these situations. You won't have to commit too many mats if you box fight, and if you can mechanically outplay them or catch them off guard, the loot you get should be enough to get you ready for the moving zones. In terms of what makes good positioning during the endgame, getting as close as possible to the safe zone can contribute a ton in helping you find kills. If you can get ahead of the pack, either with some quick tunneling, good RNG, or mobility usage, you should set up some build and start looking for elims on the players rotating in. Edit your walls, your cones, or whatever pieces you need to find those kills. If the storm is starting to catch up, consider not waiting until the last second to move. You don't want to fall behind, and you definitely don't want to give up your spot holding other players in the storm. If you have the materials and no one is contesting you, try to establish high ground on your rotates as well. 
If the zone is small enough and you got the mats, you should be able to hold it and ride that high ground train all the way to the end of the match. The only time you might need to drop down is if you start to run out of materials. When you start running out of mats during the end game, no matter what position you're playing, it's a good idea to force a kill if you can. You can box fight this or just try to find an opening on an unsuspecting player. If they're rotating or preoccupied looking for kills, most players are pretty focused on getting that done and might not even notice you lurking near them. In this example played by Clicks, we can definitely see how impactful positioning near the safe zone can be during the endgame. He's already used one shockwave to place himself on the side closest to the safe zone. Now he can look for kills. He sees the player right next to him and goes all in with the wall replace and SMG spray. Before he even reloads his weapons, he shockwaves for a good position. Clicks knows it's crucial to get set up ahead of the herd so he can avoid getting held in the storm himself. Once he reloads his weapons, he looks towards the storm for more kills. Another wall replace and Clicks gets one more. Then he picks up the shockwave and uses it to position himself close to the safe zone again. This example is just to give you guys an idea of what we mean by positioning close to the safe zone. It's vital if you want to stay alive and be able to look for kills. The shockwaves helped out a ton, but that's exactly what they're best used for. Later on, he makes it a top three, but ends up losing a fight to Booga. Guess it took one of the best players in the world to end Clix's streak here. Okay guys, so to summarize everything, there's nothing wrong with taking fights during the early game. You just need to make sure that you're trying to take each fight with every edge you can get, whether that's a resource, positioning, or third party advantage. The mid game is a lot more risky to take fights on. You're close to the late game and you can't afford to put yourself in a shaky position right before it comes up. Avoid them if you can, but if you need mats or see a nice third party opportunity, go for it. During the end game, positioning is the top priority. If you can take and hold high ground with either advanced positioning or mobility items, try taking it. It's the best position you can be in, especially in team-based modes. If you can't hold high ground or don't want to commit to taking it, playing the mid or low ground is fine. Just focus on getting ahead of the pack so you can look for kills on players rotating in. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. It helps us a lot. Also, what do you guys look for before you take a fight? Put it in the comments and it might just help the rest of the viewers out. Hey YouTube, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to talk about how to fight off multiple opponents in Fortnite. As you are probably aware, fights in Fortnite are rarely fair one-on-ones. Even in solo matches, with the new slipstream system and all the different kinds of mobility, a lot of the time you will have to fight multiple people at once. So today, I'm going to share some tips to help you come out on top in those unfair situations. So whether it's in solo, solo versus squads, duo versus squads, or any situation where you're outnumbered, this video should help you win more. Now just as a disclaimer, I do want to say I was looking for some more relevant clips to use for this video, like clips where I was doing solo versus duos, or solo versus squads but almost half of what I did have has been corrupted and really G-Force is being annoying right now. So the clips that I have may not be as relevant, but I just wanted to say that at the start um, because hopefully the audio and the tips will still be useful to you guys um, regardless of what gameplay I have in the background. All right, with that being said, just want to mention that I have timestamps linked in the description below if you want to jump between different points of this video at any point. Um, but other than that, let's get started. Okay, so the first tip I have should take place before fights even start, when it's solo versus duos or solo versus squads mainly. And that is, you need to read the situation before you go in. At this point in Fortnite, you could be the best player in the game, but if you're picking your fights against four sweats or four tryhards who clearly know what they're doing, you aren't going to have much of a chance in that fight. So what you have to do before the fight starts is get an idea of the skill level of your opponents. If you've played Fortnite for a while, you should be able to get an idea of their skill level just by watching them from a distance. A couple tells about a player's skill level could be their skin, their movement patterns, what guns or items they're using, or how they're building. So if, for example, you hear a bunch of combat shotguns going off and a massive build battle above you, you probably shouldn't jump into that fight expecting to win. Now you aren't always going to get the luxury of choosing the fight. Sometimes other people are going to make that decision for you, so this tip is situational, but before you engage in a fight, get a good reading of what is going on so you can make smarter decisions and put yourself in a better situation to win that fight. Alright, now the second tip is similar to the first because it happens before the fight really breaks out. This tip is that if there's any distance between you and the enemies and you've decided this is a fight you want to take, the first thing you should do is try to deal as much damage as you can before the fight becomes close range. This is actually a pretty common strategy, but I don't see it talked about enough. 
Obviously, you don't want to engage multiple enemies if they're all on full health, so what you should do before the fight starts is try to deal some damage from a range. Ideally, you would be doing this with either an AR or a sniper, but if you do go for a snipe to open the fight, you've got to be pretty certain you are going to hit it, because after that first shot, everyone is going to be coming at you. Whatever way you end up deciding, definitely try to get some damage in before the fight gets close range, because that is going to make things a lot easier later on in the fight. One last thing with this tip is when you decide to use your AR or whatever weapon before the fight to deal some damage, you have to be careful about them shooting back at you. Remember, if we're talking about going up against multiple enemies or a squad here for example, if you shoot at one of them, there are going to be four that are ready to shoot back at you. So you either have to peek quickly and then get back to cover, or create an angle for yourself that allows only one of them to be able to shoot back at you. This tip kind of segues nicely into the third tip, because the third thing you have to do after the fight starts is isolate enemies. We've all been there after dying in a fight where you've dealt 400 damage in total to a bunch of different people, but you haven't downed a single one. So I think we can all agree that what you don't want to do is tag everyone on their team for a little and then get rushed by all four and die. The hardest thing about fighting solo versus squads, or just fighting outnumbered in general, is when they all come rushing in at once, and you're so overwhelmed to the point where there's literally nothing you can do to fight back. So instead, the best way to get through these fights is to isolate each player and take them down one by one. Now there are many ways to go about this, but I'll just share with you guys how I try to pick my fights outnumbered. The first thing you want to do is go for the lowest health opponent. So if you were following that second tip and you were able to get some damage in before the fight starts, go for the person you damaged first. Or if you saw someone else get sniped or hurt before the fight, make them your first target. Also remember once you down someone, it's really important that you finish them. Normally finishing is more of a scumbag move and shouldn't be your first priority. But if you're outnumbered, you really don't want to have to worry about somebody getting rezzed and coming back to the fight, so I would finish anyone that you down. Now as you go on with the fight, who you take is probably going to be less and less your choice, and how the fight plays out will determine who you have to take on. But generally, the next target should be whoever is closest to you, or whoever is the most exposed. Really, the big point here is that you just need to move quickly from enemy to enemy. So pick whoever you want, but make sure that you can down that person quickly if you're going to target them. Alright, that leads me to the fourth and final tip I have for fighting outnumbered, and you've already heard it a little, but it is to finish the fight quickly. Whether you are in a solos getting targeted by two different players, or in a solo versus squads game, you've got to finish your fights quickly. Remember, the longer the fight goes on, the more time the other squad has to group up and overwhelm you with just their sheer numbers. So in these outnumbered fights, you, your go-to weapons have to be whatever can finish your opponents quickly. You probably aren't going to have time to use stinks to slowly wear them down, for example. Instead, you have to pull out your shotgun and get ready to build and edit fast, because you're going to have to bounce from one player to the next in these kind of situations. And if all else fails and these tips aren't doing it for you, I'd recommend brushing up on your basic editing and box fighting skills, since those are what is going to save you in these kinds of fights. Alright, that is going to wrap things up for this video. Hopefully these tips helped you all with fighting outnumbered. If this video did help you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, I'd like to thank you all so much for helping me hit 10,000 subscribers. That's incredible, and at this point, I don't even know how to thank you guys, so stay tuned because I will be releasing a poll asking what you guys would like to see to celebrate that. Alright, that's all I've got, so thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Jetpack? Someone's got a jetpack.